got Run Your Own Infrastructure Part 2 with uh, McFly and, and Co. So, uh, okay. Round of applause. Hello. Uh, so, I think I just can turn this down. Yep. I'll just take the other one. I'll take this one. This one down, and this one. I'd like to use this one. Oh, we can just. Okay. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm McFly. This is Tuxcoder, and this is Rivana, and we are basically from Milliways. Who of you don't know what Milliways is? <laughs> we are actually pretty bad. Um, okay, Milliways is a village of the hackers that show users whatever show up on hacker camps. First traces go back to the CCC camp 1999. Uh, we've been on all German, Dutch, and American ham camps since then. This is our first English camp, though, and yeah. In total, this is a group of around 200 people with lots of needs of communication and coordination. And that got to some points. Why? The, na the title of the talk is Run Your Own Fucking Infrastructure, and basically the question is why. I'm around for a bit, and at one time, some years ago, I noticed that in the early days, uh, everybody was running its own mail server and all the other infrastructure. This, this, some of the older ones in here might agree on that or disagree on that, but in the n latest times it's becoming more and more that people use public free web mailers like Gmail or in Germany uh, GameX or Telecom Mail or I think BT, I'm sure offers something for that, Yahoo. Um, and I got kind of annoyed with that, so I gave a rant talk, uh, slightly drunk, on the tour camp in America two years ago. Because they were organizing the tour camp at that time on Google Groups, and the organizers were all just reachable via Gmail and all that, which was kind of annoying because we had a talk that we didn't want uh, others to be able to know about this talk before. So, can you read that? Those of you who cannot read that should move in a bit closer. Okay, why should I run... I think not everything's on the screen. Okay, why should I run my uh, own stuff? It's so easy to put everything in the cloud. So, reasons for that might, and this is the number two of the talk, so I'm just giving a brief introduction on that. Um, the problem with also the web and free mailers and all that stuff you get for free on the market is that governments have access. In the earlier days, that meant the American government had access to the, all those free methods. Today, that basically means if you put your stuff on something like Gmail, all of the governments will have access. Maybe not the Iranian government, maybe not the Syrian government, but everybody who's kind of partner with the American uh, government will get access to that. But this is also not one of the biggest issues. One of the issues is also that the provider of those data might uh, modify his service. Things that have been free for a while uh, get payment only. Features move behind paywalls nowadays. So you might get used to a software and to features you will possibly not be able to access for that. This is very close with the, with the change of terms of conditions. Uh, providers giving themselves the right to do basically everything what you do over and in them and with the data you store in them. And a lot of you might know, uh, providers actually might cancel service. Um, there are hundreds of examples of services that have moved out of production or whatever you call that. Um, in Germany, for example, Facebook had a counterpart. StudiVZ, uh, SchülerVZ, and they, lots of people went in there and basically it doesn't exist anymore. Not, it does not only basically doesn't exist anymore, it got shut off. Also, for example, of those of you who bought music via, uh, via the first Microsoft services, their uh, copyright server where you validate your music against was shut off a year ago, so all your music is worthless today. <coughs> Provider might modify data, and this is by this I do not only mean uh, adding uh, watermarks to pictures uh, that get uploaded to providers. Um, 
But for example, if you're listening to YouTube in some current countries and say things like fuck, you might find out that YouTube has an automatic beeping service for some words. Which kind of is modifying my data. Well, if I would give a talk and say fuck all the time and just beep, 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 beep. But quite interesting. Really, it. I was astonished I didn't believe that really does exist. Provider might steal data, which is rather rare, but the most important thing of that is providers might get hacked. So if you trust your data to a provider, you might find yourself in the situation at some points that some groups have pasted your personal, including your credit card information, all over the internet. As has happened, uh, I'm sure we all know lots of examples. Uh, I think one of the important points in there is there was a website called has Sony been hacked this week dot com and for a pretty long time they just had the same web page just saying yes all the time. So if you're using the PSN network for example I'm pretty sure you know you, the data has been your data now is around on the internet which is something you'd rather prefer to avoid. The main point behind this is, uh, are you and your provider's interests really aligned? The company you're giving your data, if you run it in the cloud, is mainly interested in profit. Um, this actually is this way by law. In Germany, the law says, you're a corporation if you intend to earn money. And if you're a corporation, you have to intend to, to uh, earn money. There is only one service provider whose interests are always aligned with yours. That's ultimately yourself. You always have to remember if it's free, you're the product. You know that from Facebook, right? Running your own infrastructure comes with problems. Um, we will, or we wanted to mention that. If you run your own server and install a WordPress and a media wiki and then keep running your own hackerspace for another four or five years without updating your WordPress and a media wiki ever, you will have a bad time. So you should remember this, running your own infrastructure, that um, it comes with risk. But this is a hacker conference. Most of you are staying in hacker, uh, hacker spaces. So I think you should take up that challenge and update your servers. To help that, by the way, Moon and Nagios are offering your plugins to control your server if some software is to be updated. So um, those service is actually pretty useful. So what's we're going to present now is after the rent why you shouldn't run it anymore is the setup we have found familiar ways that works that is kind of documented and we swear to work on this in the like the next weeks but what we present here is i think something that in our opinion groups out there and hackerspaces out there should set up in their own hackerspace um, because quite frankly not everybody is able to run a server but who of the, you is not associated with a hackerspace and does not have a hackerspace in the city? Four. So give me your cities, I'll find you the next hackerspace. For a long time, as I said before, it was really important to run your own shit. Uh, it's basically has been impossible to get on the right and the interesting mailing list with the public webmailer. And I think we need to get back to this. Um, and what are things that actually are worth running by yourself and r your hackerspace? Most hackerspaces have a wiki already. Some hackerspaces have a blog. Um, both of that is, I think, down to like 50%. But things are very useful to run on a, a hacker space of things like the, your mail server, uh, address book, calendar, I'm just summing it up, mailing list. Uh, who of you is in a hacker space? Which hacker space has their mailing list at Google, Google Groups or any other public web mailer? 
That's um. So yeah, take this as a challenge after that to uh, improve your hackerspace there. Uh, if you need any help, talk to us. Um, besides the mailing list, the blog, there are things like project software. If you have a hacker site, sometimes in those hacker sites, actually awesome things happen. And uh, for smaller things, you know, don't need any project management. But uh, I don't know um, if you do things like you travel to uh, a hacker camp on a strange island somewhere over the behind the water. Um, it actually have, helps to have something like uh, project software. And we also come to things like cloud storage, Wikipads. Um, we will not mention in this talk, but there also is things like service networks, especially VPN, where there's a CAS VPN and other things that are very interesting to run in your own, own hackerspace. All of them are pretty easy. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we are using an LDAP system on our server to uh, authenticate all the users with one account and one password. And we have some scripts to generate accounts and to basically allow people to register themselves. It's pretty dirty and uh, kind of quick, so we'll probably fix it never. But uh, yeah, we have a hidden web interface. You can register yourself and we will accept your user account or we may not. It's pretty easy. And all our servers authenticate against LDAP. So that works. Uh, the mail part is my... Um, 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 the mail is my part uh, and we use uh, Postfix with uh, LDAP authentication for, um, for the outgoing emails. Dove code for uh, EMAP and incoming emails and Roundcube as webmailer. Um, we, uh, yeah, what's that? What's that? yeah. Uh, mailman is using for uh, mailing lists on the other server. And yes, uh, yes, uh, all uh, we have. Uh, uh, Global rule for anti uh, anti spam. The spam uh, uh, automatically moves into a chunk folder, and yeah, basically that's it. We al we also have sieve and yeah, which is kind of uh, useful. And for Java, so XMPP, we are using Prosody, and we uh, configured so it's uh, client to server TLS is mandatory. Uh, it's just it's set up in like 10 minutes. Yeah, and then we have CalDev, CardDev. Uh, we use uh, own cloud right now only for CalDev and CardDev, not for data stuff. Um, it might be sound running own cloud for just this is uh, might sound very dirty, but uh, actually we found out that if you try to authenticate against LDAP, most of the solutions we found on the market, we, this, we ended up with OwnCloud after like five or six different things we tried. Uh, some of them have incredible high CPU usage, some of them are incredible slow, and some of them actually lose pretty frequently your address book or your calendar. So uh, all the solutions we came up is a process of some of them weeks of loss of data because solutions we haven't we haven't been ending up with here were kind of uh, not so awesome as they give you the first impression open source can suck too it usually does suck and we have cloud file storage which we are using a C file for it's like own cloud but not in PHP and uh, it has uh, clients for basically everything. Uh, LDAP integration is easy. And uh, you can have like uh, uh, picture albums and stuff. And, and it's encrypted. It just works. The good part in there is the group features. Um, that is really one of the most awesome things to have one chat folder uh, that is just synced into the notebook. So adding things or getting things out of there, getting it there becomes very, very, very easy. So, so easy that people actually use it. 
and this is the most problem with most of the stuff the knock the nerds from the kind of knock of the hackerspace put up like nobody ever uses it and if you want to build something that is uh for hackers only um you will end up in the situation that most of the people from your hackerspace will like it will tell it to other does it exist and that it's awesome that it's there while simply not using it this is a major problem because it kills your motivation in a hacker space. So things need to be easy and things need to be well documented. So actually the average user with, who is not an admin can actually do that. And then there's project man management, which we use to build the stuff and which we use to uh, plan our trip to Britain with the ferry and stuff. It's easy to set up and run if you are not using Nginx as web server. Also, if you move to new hackerspace. Use Puppet! Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Puppet is for nerds only and therefore for forbidden on those servers. Um, but the project management tool is something that needs like 10 minutes to set up and you possibly won't use it for a while. Everybody gets an account in there with LDAP automatically. And then you have to move to a new venue, a new location with your hackerspace. And that most likely is for a lot of hackerspace the first time they really realize how useful tools like real project management tools are in a hackerspace. Um, sure, small projects can easily be built without such tools, but bigger things. It's very, very useful, uh, at least what we think there. We also have a media wiki, but I think most spaces came up to that already. What? A ticket master is somebody in the hacker space who's willing to clean up uh, the ticket system. Um, it's like cleaning up your hacker space, just it's done in five minutes and you don't need to stand up and get your hands dirty. Uh, there, but there's still stuff to be done. We would like to have a WordPress block for every user. Uh, I think that should mean RSS is planned. RSS is planned, but okay. And streaming servers for audio and video would be kind of nice to have. Yeah. And there's more to be done. So yeah, the uh, issue really is uh, that in the last days we got the habit of moving more and more to the cloud. I don't think the cloud itself is a bad feature, just it should be your own cloud. And this can be done with several things. It's way easier than you think and the experienced Unix masters in here might think, what is he talking about? This is all just very trivial things to set up. But actually I tried to find a hackerspace who has gone that far and Usually you got mailing list, usually got a blog. Some of them have a Java service and some rare ones in Germany have projects because Germans like to be over-organized. Um, but we think it really is worth it and we'd like to motivate you and the other people to change that culture back and move your emails back to people that are closer to you. The advantage of hosting your email in your own hacker space and not with Gmail is actually a pretty easy one. You can't hit the admin of your Google emails with a stick if you have your email with Google, but you can do that in a hacker space. And that's actually a pretty good and useful feature in the way of you have a direct communication way to your administrator. You can talk to them directly and modifying and other things. New things is way, way easier if you're just able to hit him with a stick or alternatively bring him a box of Club Mate or anything like that to motivate him to do things. And the point behind this really is like we really would like to motivate you to move the, your stuff back to yourself. Not for everybody into every it not for everybody. That like not everybody needs to run its own server, but in general I think where the hackerspaces should. Um, if you want to get more information about that, if you want to discuss that, I th usually at this point when I'm at the talk, uh, there's some Unix guy standing up and saying, yes, but why Postfix? Uh, isn't LightX seem way better? Um, if your opinion in there is MailPile is better, 
please come down to Millways. We'd like to discuss that, especially if you're a developer of mail file. For all the others, well, also come down to Millways and just discuss this after us. I think we have good reasons, but if you're an experienced administrator running your stuff for your hackerspace and you have tons of experience with Axiom, really use Axiom. And if you're really lazy but not too lazy, there's a whole complete Linux distribution with all this stuff inside, actually. It's called Sential and it's just everything in there, including open exchange and XMPP. It's very easy to set up, but you can't really modify it that easy. You can, mo can modify it because it's the, the Linux, Linux, but uh, not really that easy. Okay, we're coming to the end of the talks. We want to give you some some uh, the chance to give you some questions. So we're coming to the thanks section. First of all, I'd like to express a big thank you, and I think it's worth an applause to the American government for spying us so badly. So everybody now understands that you should read your own, uh, you should run your own shit and shit your own encrypt your own shit because I think nothing has ever helped that much in enforcing encryption that came out of the Snowden thing. So thank you, American government. You really made this talk and the discussion about this talk way easier. But I'd like though, I'd also like to express my thanks for all the admins that run chat for me because actually some other people do run stuff for me. And I think you should also. Uh, if you have an administrator on your hackerspace that does all the stuff for him, get him a clip mod, some clip mod or some good things he likes from time to time. Keeps those people motivated. Next thanks comes to the Millieways village uh, that basically has created the demand and also therefore has helped for a lot of the risk. But in the end, um, we're close to the thought. You know and heard that Millieways is basically donation run. Um, we'd like to support you. We nearly collected like 800 pounds yesterday on the whiskey uh, on the last days on the whiskey and the beer and the stuff. Also, some of you might have seen that we have this nice fancy challenge coins, uh, which is actually kind of a way for us to raise funds to go over to the ferry, because you might heard from my accent, we are actually German, and the ferry, the food trail and that stuff is like 500 pounds alone, um, if you drive from the Netherlands. So we have still have some challenge coins left. Those of you who might be interested in what that is can come to the front and have a look at it. Um, I think there are like 30 left, so get one. That would be our ferry together. So, any questions for that? We're coming to an end. Did I talk the blood out of years? Have you considered... Hello? <laughs> Have you considered using GitLab for hosting your code base? I... Th Git is in the name of one of the tools we store code and also it's also in the C file and uh, we would put it, we don't care, it's open source. We The stuff we created is, at the moment we need to clean up so we're not too ashamed to present it to the real public but it's working and we never intended to keep it back and keep it closed source, it should be open source. Because I think especially the LDAP setup, where we wrote the code for that, might look... Uh, it will save you a lot of time if you start with your LDAP setup from there. And if you have improvements, I, I really get is something very useful for that to have a, like a pull request in there. So yeah, we'll end up with something like Git in the name. Uh, we also have it on our on Git server. So it, there we run more things that are mentioned on the slides. Uh, maybe not surprisingly. More questions? Any things you would like to see in such a setup? Because the idea we have is just actually setting it up and documenting it so other people can way easy set it up way easier. Sorry? If both hackerspaces use C file, that's actually a very interesting feature that you can do this over the other C files too. So you can have you can create groups and you have can have like people from other hackerspaces. You also have a C file in that group. Right. 
Sorry, I should have got to the mic first. Um, uh, what, what do you reckon to diaspora as a means of communication? Because uh, you can run your own pods and things. I like it. I have run my own pod like three years ago. It wasn't the pain in the ass at that time. We are at the point where I think it should be worth trying again. Uh, the problem is it's people hardly use it, mm. to be very, really honest. I like the idea way more than, than Facebook, obviously, because like, see the title of my talk. But uh, with social network, the problem is you need to go where the people are. Yeah. And diaspora is a nice idea, and I hope that as Facebook spice even worse than the American government on it, which they actually might, and everybody moves over to diaspora, but I'm not seeing that at the moment. But yes, a diaspora spot is something also very interesting to run there. Last time I tried, it was pretty much pain in the ass. Uh, are you a developer there? No, no, I just started using it a while ago because I, oh, I don't yeah. like Facebook and uh, I want to run my own pod at some point, but it looked a bit tricky, so I'm not Yeah, tired. it's uh, it's kind of pain in the ass to set up. We got it working, but it's, it doesn't have as many developers as Facebook has, obviously. Thanks. But I like it. Any more questions? Microf VPN. Uh, we have a VPN solution that's called Case VPN. I gave several talks on that. Uh, it's a meshed system that I might explain you down at Milliways because that will blow this talk here. But yes, we do have a VPN solution behind that. Uh, possible things are there are OpenVPN and as we use Hack Case VPN, which is a uh, VPN from mostly or from a lot of German hacker spaces around the CCC that is intended to connect hacker spaces in places where hackers are. But we left that out in the talk because that will blow the talk. Can you connect anonymously? Yeah, Dep that depends on your server setup. You can set up your server in a way that it's just a hidden service in Tor. That is one of the nice things actually running your own infrastructure is you can modify those things. Yeah, but I think if you connect to Tor, no. Yeah. Or if you connect to KS VPN, he sees that there is a VPN connection, and that's it. Same with with uh, OpenVPN. Okay. So if you would like to have a look at challenge coins and maybe get one as there are still some come over here, we'd really like to appreciate that because this thing pays the free beer we're giving out at Milliways.